Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and it's an incredibly hot sunny day today so it's really unusual for me to be on the allotment at this sort of time. I'm normally here early in the morning before I go off for my uh, sort of daily activities and uh, late at night just for sort of half an hour something like that and Debbie and I often have a little walk around the site. Uh, anyway, because I'm here I thought I would just get in the uh, monthly tour. So this is the June tour. Let's have a look around. So here's a quick overview of the plot. We're going to go in the polytunnel first. So this is where most of the action is. I've got my cuckoo melons in homemade compost and hence loads of weed seeds. And I keep on wanting to climb up the strings, but I don't want them to do that. I want them to trail down like this. But they're doing pretty well, I'm quite pleased. I've got loads of them up here as well. And then I've got a few tomatoes in containers. And these, if anybody watched my old videos, are the ones that uh, were grafted. And they're doing rather well. I'm quite pleased with these. Some nice trusses on these. I wasn't very happy with these plants, if you remember, but uh, I managed to salvage three, I think, out of the six that I'd got. I've actually got one in the garden, so I salvaged four. And there's just some, some more in containers here. And these are basically reserved for sort of October, November plants. Uh, so because at that time the polytunnel main beds will all be empty of these tomatoes. And again, I'm pretty pleased with these. They're putting a lot of growth on. There's lots of good trusses on them. And it's been reasonably good weather for them as well. Not too hot. Recently in the last month they're like that. They don't want it too warm in here. It's always a challenge to keep the uh, heat down. Hence, I've got my Milo blanket up at the moment. The center cut squash is suffering a bit. Lots of these lower leaves dying off now. This always seems to happen with the Trumpuccino family. They're great really early in the season, but as soon as you get into sort of, you know, well into summer, they start to suffer. They've still got quite a few fruits on them. They're just a really nice early plant. And then, uh, you know, by the time this is exhausted, we'll start to have plenty of squash outside. So that's kind of the way it's meant to work. Little peppers are doing all right in here. Got some decent fruits on some of them. Well, actually on all, all of them. one down there. They've all got fruits anyway and the celery is fantastic. Taking such a big harvest off here um, and it's worth repeating that a lot of people say celery needs incredible amounts of water and they dig big holes and water reservoirs and all sorts of kind of extreme measures to grow celery but we find it grows fine and just give it the same amount of water as a tomato in the uh, in the polytunnel here and just keep on harvesting it every week as I cut and come again plant. Cucumbers are doing quite nicely. Loads of cucumbers coming on this one. This is Lediva. So uh, we'll be start harvesting this one at the weekend. And I think, I can't remember what this one is actually. I think this is Lediva as well. So, uh, you know, lots of little baby cucumbers on these. Really prolific. Just show, show the trusses. Looking really nice. Of course, we've got our early tomatoes at home, which we've been harvesting for the last month. Um, but these are the earliest of the main crops. So we've got my first ripe tomato in the polytunnel. I'm just going to eat that. Mm, nice. 
a bit nicer than the early ones at home actually and under the trestle table we've got peppers and we've actually started harvesting off these just one fruit uh, every other week something like that and we're picking them green and uh, just letting them ripen on the windowsill just to stimulate uh, more fruit growth so these are the french beans that started in the polytunnel i moved them outside about three weeks ago and they're doing great out here of course now they don't need to be in the polytunnel loads of beans on them we're picking well about two liters a week something like that off these early beans definitely worth doing I think we've been harvesting these beans for three weeks and uh, we'll probably still get a good harvest off them for the next two or three weeks and and by then of course the main crop will be ready and same story with the early runner beans they're looking really great and again these were only harvested a couple of days ago so uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with those right so let's take a look at the rest of the garden so in here we've got our winter carrots all the way down there looking pretty good quite pleased with those and then we've got our second succession outdoor um, New Zealand spinach bed and that's coming on quite well that was a radish bed we just interplanted into some gaps and the New Zealand spinach is sort of flying away now that's the way with New Zealand spinach until it gets really warm it just uh, stalls and then as soon as it gets the right temperature it just goes crazy so then we've got some spare calabrese that I just stuck in there and these are the autumn fruiting so summer fruiting raspberries it's like a fantastic crop on here and these are the autumn fruiters just coming along and then we've got the gooseberries looking pretty good not not the best crop we've ever had more gooseberries around the back there and then these are the main crop onions and um, we've got another bed of main crop onions at home in the front garden, sort of around the border. And they're doing well as well. Pretty pleased with the growth of these. Of course, they've got a long time to go. We'll be harvesting these in August. And I'm really pleased with the outdoor sweet corn. It's about three weeks behind uh, this is an early bed of sweet corn it's about three weeks behind my earliest which is in the polytunnel and this is about three weeks ahead of the uh, sweet corn the main crop sweet corn that's on jenny's plot so i made a little half coal frame top for the sweet potatoes and they're really enjoying it in there they're doubling in size every week at the moment and this is my first new red of chard and again i'm really pleased with it there's no real leaf minor damage on it at the moment and it's growing really nicely again it's kind of doubling in size every week which is just exactly what we want to see at this time of year we don't plant uh, ours too early we find here it just goes to seed if we plant it too soon and then these are my hopefully early baking potatoes and they're going to be harvested in two weeks time so fingers crossed they are baking potato size i will do a reveal of those mini greenhouse is now doing its duty as a drying room for the garlic all these shelves are full of garlic and onions and then in this bed i've got purple sprouting broccoli and then i've got 12 snowball cauliflowers planted obviously incredibly closely together the objective being that i actually get 12 snowball sized cauliflowers kale bed in here but 
despite the covers because it doesn't really work these covers aren't um, fine enough I have got a little bit of cabbage aphid but uh, not to worry we'll take that leaf off and hopefully we haven't got a lot of cabbage aphid anywhere else that tends to be the nature of it kind of con seems to concentrate on particular plants like this one so again we'll just take that that whole plant out there's kind of no saving a plant like that really and i'll take that leaf off there and then again just hope that all these survive we're only harvesting these sprouts for leaves so uh, we're not really worried about losing the odd plant it's not an issue it's the asparagus and we stopped harvesting this two weeks ago i think something like that and it's just gone crazy in those two weeks so uh, yeah plenty of energy left in that plant after you know quite uh, rigorous harvesting every uh, other day i think i've got my early dwarf french beans these are the ones well this is the bed where i lost them to a uh, frost so i had to replant them all but uh, i'm actually quite pleased that i didn't bother with the uh, that i did lose them to the frost because these have just come just at the right time really so i'm quite happy with those now i'm not going to uh, plant them really early again next year i'm just going to stick with the early ones in the polytunnel instead we've got plenty of beans coming on these i'm really happy with them furthest on of my golden beetroot beds and we just started harvesting this last week and i'm not actually very pleased with myself with this because i could have got golden beetroot earlier if i'd uh, so just paid a bit more attention i'm just pulling them in mare's tail out here if i paid more attention to it uh, but anyway that's a, always something to improve on for next year and i just pop these lettuces in i don't normally have lettuces at this time of year uh, on the allotment just because of watering it's just too much hassle um, but uh, i have put these hearting lettuces so these are little gem in here and i actually put some uh cantarix in as well down the center and i'll leave those to heart up so basically these are just going to be left to heart they don't need as much water when they're left to heart as they do when you're picking them every week so this is uh, the perpetual spinach bed the first of the perpetual spinach beds and you can see it is going to seed and this is what happens if you plant uh, too early or you get heat stress and I suspect it's heat stress this time anyway I'll keep taking these seed heads off um, every harvest day and it should be fine for a little bit longer anyway uh, this is my parsnip bed I wonder if that's a carrot fly there I don't actually know what they look like carrot flies but anyway I'm pretty pleased with this this is my first time growing um, parsnips and there were a few stations over there that didn't get any germination so I replanted those and sowed those and uh, got germination now so I'm really happy with those they're all looking pretty good I think I uh, planted four seeds per station and I've just snipped out the uh, surplus so this was my, the earliest of my onion beds and that was tough ball and I've harvested those and they're actually drying in the uh, polytunnel and I've still got this bed which is a later variety this is stir on still to harvest it's going pretty well I don't need it yet we've got plenty of onions I've had a few go to seed again I'm not worried about that so long as it's only a few Plus we can eat these seed heads as well and the onions are okay processed uh, for freezing so uh, we'll be doing that next harvest day and this is another one of my early 
sprout beds and it's just starting to heart up now into sprout tops which is what I want and when it does we'll harvest these this bed for sprout tops and then uh, we'll take it out and replant it with something else although it's just possible we might actually get some sprouts we are starting to get some sprouts forming on the stem so as soon as we take the tops off those sprouts will accelerate so maybe I'll leave it till August see if I can get some sprouts as well before I clear it I'd actually need the bed until August anyway just a few more kales so this is my main early New Zealand spinach bed and uh, this is going pretty nicely and this one benefited from the protection of a coal frame top which I've only just taken off today actually uh, so you can see the difference that a bit of protection makes and then this is my golden purslane bed harvested this two days ago and it's all grown back already I love that it really is uh, a fast grower so these are my peas Monish 2 they're finished now we've switched to the bed at home just leaving these on for seed and then this is another golden purslane bed not doing very well planted too early I think um, because I had to take the coal frame top off because of the peas I think it just got uh, too much cold weather on it so it's not really thriving this one red ace I think much better planted pretty much the same time in fact I think a week after the golden purslane no after the golden beetroot so uh, pretty good little tiny bit of damage on this from leaf miner but not much and then these are the early winter carrot beds just starting to germinate and then they'll be covered this is the autumn carrot bed this is the summer carrot bed we've just started harvesting this could have done with being a little bit earlier we actually only just made it through with carrots this year popped in this little cutting of um, perennial kale two weeks ago that was a third the size of that it's amazing how quickly they grow even though we've got something eating it but it'll shrug that off perennial kale is so tough not tough to eat resilient to pests is what I really mean to say little trees just struggling on don't really like all this heat and this is my late strawberry bed so this one is my summer flowering brassica bed so this is all things like green sprouting broccoli calabrese purple sprouting broccoli romanesco cauliflowers and all that let's have a peek that is all looking quite nice in there I need to uh, take these covers off soon because as you saw earlier on we are getting some cabbage aphid and of course you never see it underneath the nets by the time you see it it's too late these nets are really just to stop the birds and once the plants get about this size basically once they're touching the top of the net and pushing it up then uh, the birds generally leave it alone they like them smaller I've just taken the little bubble wrap cover off this New Zealand spinach and I only planted this literally a week ago and it's just grown so much I just love that cover but it's too hot now for covers so it's gonna fend for itself it's looking pretty good and it's actually a quite nice container this for New Zealand spinach because it'll all trail down uh, around the edges there let's just uh, take a look at the peppers so the peppers are in these little low tunnels it's been an experiment using these low tunnels to see how useful they are for peppers uh, they're obviously really useful over winter for things like the spinach salad crops carrots and things like that but let's have a look we've actually uh, started harvesting these 
one fruit every two weeks and again like the ones in the polytunnel we're harvesting them green and letting the windowsill ripen them up and I've kind of got them on their maximum venting setting and that provides a, a really nice environment for them they're getting a little bit of wind insects can get in there to do the pollinating and eat the green fly they're not getting too hot uh, but they're sheltered from the wind so uh, works quite well so here's the next one again plenty of peppers all the biggest peppers have gone obviously because we've been harvesting them but uh, still oops, lots of nice peppers on here we've got quite a few um, of these cyan peppers which are ripe now actually so as you can see it's kind of ripe ones on most of the plants and again we harvested all the ripe ones uh, two days ago so they're ripening up pretty quickly and again some good good sized peppers on here these are long red Marconi and these at the back here Oh, California wonder. I'm still kind of amazed that uh, this courgette is still going. We've been harvesting it now for a while, it must be near enough two months and uh, it just keeps on throwing off a courgette every every two or three days really. I'm still good size. The plant is looking very unhealthy now and again it doesn't really matter because we've got alternatives now uh, plenty of uh, courgettes at home so I thought I'd just quickly show you my little kind of border of my plot down here it's looking a little bit wild but uh, I'm still quite pleased with that I've got a cherry here I've actually got uh, quite a lot of cherries it doesn't get a huge amount of sun uh, this tree which is good because the uh, all the other cherries that we've got are kind of coming to an end just at the time when this one will start to ripen so this is the perpetual kale plant and we've been just gradually taking off all these straggly outer branches and uh, giving away kale cuttings at the moment we're only giving them away to people who you know, I can physically give them to uh, just because it's too hot to post them uh, successfully but maybe in autumn we'll do some postings because I know there's lots of people who want uh, perennial kale cuttings some nice pears I really love these little planting pockets with all the alpines in them and this is a, an extremely straggly um, what is it plum tree not doing very well. Another apple tree, more planting pockets, thornless blackberry just uh, starting to come into bloom. I'm really looking forward to this because I love snacking on fruit on the allotment. So this is another one of the uh, Taunton Dean perennial kales and this is one that's gone to seed uh, it doesn't affect the plant it will just carry on because it's a perennial plant um, but they are not meant to go to seed apparently and some other gardeners don't believe that they do well this is the evidence they most definitely do sometimes go to seed now they're probably sterile but uh, well I'm gonna harvest a few of them anyway and give them a try just in case because it would be a lot easier to send these out in the post I've got to show you my elephant garlics in here and these are just a few cloves that uh, for some reason I didn't manage to harvest last year I decided I'm going to leave them in I'm going to grow clumps of perennial kales not <laughs> what am I talking about of um, elephant garlic in this in the center of this strawberry bed and I'm going to harvest them a bit like leeks 
because they are kind of in the leek family rather than the garlic family. Um, and so in spring, late spring, when we don't have any leeks left, uh, we're going to start harvesting elephant garlic instead, which is pretty good. About 10 days ago, I think, uh, when we thinned this uh, carrot bed, we um, took all of the cloves of garlic from the store that were sprouting and we just planted those in here and we're going to use this as green garlic and so hopefully in a couple of months time so yeah, August, late August time again before we have any leeks we'll uh, be uh, taking this green garlic and using it as leeks so uh, I'm quite pleased with that. I don't know whether it's going to work or not because we've never tried doing this before, but it uh, looks pretty good as well. And in theory, this would protect a little bit from the carrot fly, although, you know, we're not relying on that because we've got nets. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video. And as you can see, there's not a lot going on on the allotment at this time of year. Most of our growing is at home in the back garden. Uh, where it's just a lot easier to look after everything, it's easier to water everything, it's easy, there's a lot less pests and all of that sort of thing. So um, yeah, not much going on, easy to manage, but uh, pretty happy with the way things are going. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.